Welcome back to our session, New Ways of Working. And as we all are facing constant learning, we all have experienced flavors of new ways of working. We would like to um, kick off this session through the lens of an emerging conservator. And we'll hear her thoughts and observations on um, new ways of working. So I want to welcome Rhea Grammatikopoulou, who studied art history and theory at the Essen School of Fine Arts and owned her master in media conservation from the Stuttgart State Academy of Fine Arts. Since September 2020, um, she has been working as a trainee in time-based media conservation at the Kunstsammlung Nordrhein-Westfalen in Düsseldorf. So please join me in welcoming Ria and the stage is yours. Thank you, Christine. And hello, everyone. And also thank you, Martina and Martina, for organizing this really lovely uh, symposium. I'm really glad I get to be part of it. Uh, let me share my screen. So, and I'll just start. Uh, so, one of the things that I find really attractive about time based media conservation is the fact that it's a field of expertise uh, that is constantly moving forward and evolving. And along with it, the institutional approach towards the care of time-based media is also constantly changing, uh, evolving, and being reshaped. And I think that this change, uh, as it was mentioned yesterday, I think, in the final panel round, um, it's changed that it's, it's happening organically, driven by, by the demands of uh, the artworks. Like Fernando Dominguez Rubio very fittingly mentions uh, in his paper, time-based media art can be seen as elements that create the kind of discontinuities that lead to the transformation of organizations and institutions, and therefore as vectors of change in the process of cultural production. Since I started working at the Kunstsammlung Nordrhein-Westfalen as a trainee, I have been witnessing this institutional transformation firsthand. In my presentation today, I hope to outline this transition of approach, specifically when it comes to the uh, time-based media acquisition workflows in the Kunstsammlung now and 20 years ago. But first, let me give you a quick overview. The Kunstsammlung has been acquiring time-based media art since the early 2000s when K21 was established. As you can see in the chart, there was a time-based media acquisition boom during the first years of establishment, which was mostly video art collections, followed by a rather quiet phase uh, up until the last couple of years when diverse video, audio, and also some software-based artworks started flowing into the collection. In 2010, a time-based media conservator was hired as a trainee for the first time. And after a 10-year gap, just around the time when the numbers started to rise again, I was hired. So now, in order to outline this change of approach towards caring for time-based media art now and 20 years ago, I will compare two case studies. One of them was freshly acquired last year, and the other one was first shown in 2002, so exactly 20 years ago, and acquired a bit later in 2004. I'll start with the most recent case. Simon Denny's Amazon Water Cage was acquired in 2021, shortly after its first presentation in K21 for the Simon Denny solo for the Simon Denny solo exhibition Mine. The installation 
consists of a three meter tall white cage with a virtual bird living in it. In order to experience the bird, museum visitors had to download the Amazon worker cage application from the app store, point with their phone camera at the cage, and then an augmented reality bird would appear on the screen, flying and tweeting inside of the cage. During this first exhibition setup, we received installation instructions from the artist's studio, and together with our handling team, we took over the assembly of the artwork. When it was done, Simon Denny was present for the positioning of the cage in the room, and later on, his programmer came by to set up the application. After the end of this exhibition, it was eternally announced that Amazon Walker Cage was about to enter the collection. Not having acquired another app-based artwork before, a lot of questions started popping up during the uh, pre-acquisition phase. Question related to the data we would get, the source code, the development environment, and managing the App Store account. So after talking to the head of collections about all this, uh, it was decided to reach out to the artist. This was the first time that conservation staff got actively involved in the acquisition conversation. We had an artist interview with Simon Denny, who was really open to discuss our questions, and he shed light onto technical and contextual issues regarding the future of the app and his artwork in general. So I'm jumping to the second case. Reinhard Muchas, das Deutschlandgerät, entered K21 in 2002 and became part of the collection in 2004, as I said. It's a monumental site-specific installation, the biggest one in the collection so far, actually. And part of the artwork are 15 videos originally running on CRT monitors, as well as speakers, subwoofers, DVD, CD players, and naturally many, many cables. Internal records show that at the time the work was first installed, Muha worked with his own team of experts and no assistance from the conservation staff was required. Within its exhibition time span of 20 years now, the monitors of the Deutschlandgerät have undergone several problem-driven repairments by CRT specialist Christian Draheim, who many of you know, I'm sure, and some of them had to be replaced. Apart from these technical treatments, the hardware components did also go through some unorthodox changes caused mostly by things like spontaneous technical uh, solutions. For example, sorry. For example, media players were applied to keep the videos running when the DVD players stopped working. And the position of some DVD players and the cables uh, were different from time to time. And all these changes happened without any consultation from the artist. After these recurring issues and after the repairments of the CRT monitors, Reinhard Mucha was recently inspired to do an interesting update to the artwork. So the videos are now shown on flat screen that are mounted on the deactivated CRTs. And the old hardware hasn't been removed, but uh, adopted a new, more sculptural dimension, serving as the base holders for the flat screens. This time, the curatorial and the conservation staff was involved in the process. And supporting Muha's action was a perfect chance for us in the team to build up the communication channel that uh, wasn't established back in 2002. 
And documenting the process led me to dig deeper into the past of the artwork. And while doing so, I realized how different working with time-based media art artworks was 20 years ago, apart from the fact that there was no documentation material from the time of installation. I was also missing pictures, inventories, and data sheets of the original, as well as of the second generation hardware. And I also couldn't find any documentation stating the artist's thought on how to deal with technical obsolescence in the future. Comparing these two case studies, I notice that apart from the handling during their acquisition timeframe, what also differs is the artistic practice itself. Simon Denny conceptualizes and designs his work and then outsources his project to external specialists like technicians and programmers. Whereas Reinhard Mucha's way of working is more old school. He prefers to work hands-on and personally engage in the setup of his projects. So to complete this comparison, I think it becomes kind of clear that the institutional, but also the artistic approach towards time-based media art were quite different 20 years ago. From the moment Amazon Worker Cage entered the collection, museum staff was 100% uh, included in handling the artwork. And there was an acquisition dialogue between conservation staff and artists, giving us useful material to to work with and to conduct a conservation plan. But at the time when das Deutschlandgerät entered the collection, uh, this inclusive and collaborative approach wasn't yet that popular. So maybe it's really about different generations of artists, of artworks, and also conservators. And also, to be fair, Das Deutschlandgerät is simply a time-based media artwork with a lot of hardware elements from the early 2000s permanently on exhibit since then. So it also kind of is a natural evolution that at some point the technical aspects did not correspond to the artistic intent. The rising amount of complex digital artworks being accessioned combined with the presence of a time-based media conservator in the Kunstsammlung now are reshaping the approach to the acquisition workflows. The conservation department is getting actively involved in the pre-acquisition phase, giving us space to point out the right questions to the artists to inquire and evaluate an archival information package, and then to properly store it in our digital archive. And I really think that similar to the Kunstsammlung nowadays, more and more stakeholders of contemporary art uh, choose to work with conservators on the acquisitions of time-based media art and they recognize that this can prevent the discrepancy between artistic intent and technical obsolescence, and also that it can sometimes enhance the sense of trust and collaboration uh, on part of the artist towards the museum. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to answer questions in case there are any. <laughs>